In the 1960s, this nation was galvanized by a common goal. Any really great goal has a what and a why. John F. Kennedy masterfully established this for our nation with his famous what. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and his support of why, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. A goal this big has risk. John F. Kennedy's goal had risk. It had a lot of risk. And with risk comes the potential for failure. Failure. Let's talk about failure. Failure too often signifies finality, the disappointing end to an unaccomplished dream. You see, <clears throat> I don't see it that way. To me, failure is an exploration of the current limits of one's capabilities. It is neither a beginning nor an end. It's merely a course correction in a continual process where you take a risk, potentially fail, and pivot to a new direction. When you think about Kennedy's goal, there is a great example of risk-fail-pivot, and that's the Apollo 13 mission. During a routine maintenance procedure on board the spacecraft while en route to the moon, there was an explosion. It crippled the spacecraft. Mission Control was faced with a daunting set of challenges. The spacecraft was bleeding oxygen, it lacked sufficient power, and it was suffering from increased levels of carbon dioxide that could prove lethal to the crew. Compounding this was the fact that the guidance system was being controlled by a computer less powerful than a Fitbit. It, too, had to be shut down. But despite all these failures, the crew of Apollo 13 returned home safely. The Apollo 13 team defined themselves by their response to failure rather than the act of failing. Failure is an option when your response to failure is guided by your what and why. When I was 27 years old, the concept of risk fail pivot that was not in my vocabulary. I worked at a job I did not like doing things I did not like to do. But I had a what. My what was to start a company, be a CEO, make a lot of money. My why was I wanted to control my destiny. <laughs> I was so naive. But when the opportunity came to start a company, I jumped. And that company did some interesting things in digital video technology for a period of time. And I partially achieved my what? I started a company. I was a CEO. That part about making money? No, not so much. We made no money. And so after four years, we were forced to sell. And going forward, we had a new management team out in Minnesota. And we had weekly calls with that management team. About a year into that process, I called for our weekly call and nobody picked up the phone. So I called the next day. Nobody picked up the phone. And I called the third day. Nobody picked up the phone. I had a friend go and check on the office. He called me back and he said, Todd, you have a problem. There are no phones. There are no computers in the office. There's no desk in the office. There are no people in the office. The management team had disappeared without a trace. Soon thereafter, the chairman of the board of directors called me and he said, Todd, here's the situation. The company's out of money. It owes creditors over a million dollars and we're holding you responsible. <laughs> that was not a good day. I only had one thing left. I had the people that remained at the company in State College. I felt a deep bond to them. 
And so over the next three months, my wife and I pulled money from every source that we could find, and we provided limited funds to those that stayed behind. All the while, I was negotiating with creditors, paying them pennies on the dollar. My wife and I were on the brink of financial ruin, but a strange thing was happening. I found myself with an unending desire to help those people. Whereas when I started my first company, I cared about myself more than others. I found myself caring about others more than I cared about myself. With no money in sight on November 14th of 1997, the remaining people had no other choice but to leave and go to the unemployment office. But as they left, they gave me a glimmer of hope. They said, Todd, if you start a company and get me some money by December 10th, maybe we'll give it another shot. Okay, well, that's a, that's a little bit of hope. But in that moment, I was alone. I did not have a company. I did not have a job. I had no money. I was a failure. I was a failure for 30 seconds. Risk, fail, pivot. Failure is an option when you define yourself by the response to failure rather than the act of failing. Failure is an option when your response to failure is guided by your what and why. In those 30 seconds, my what and why had become very, very, very obvious. I was driven to enable people to be the person they dream of being, and my why had grown to be much bigger, positively impact society. You see, I believe that people, when given a great job, will grow and be challenged and be happy and have positive energy. And I believe that energy will impact the workplace. And I believe that that energy will spill out as people go into society as a parent, as a friend, as a spouse. And I believe that if we can start that here in our backyard and encourage that to grow, that it will grow and grow and grow. And we can positively impact society. So with my what and why in hand, it was time to start a company, but time was not on my side. The first thing I did was I borrowed some money from my father, $3,500, and with that money, I bought a plane ticket to Silicon Valley and I scheduled some visits. And so then I flew out to the valley and went knocking on doors, knock, knock, knock. I need $5,000 by December 10th. And I have a group of really smart people that know things about digital video technology. If you'll give me that money by December 10th, I'll give you really cheap engineering services for a year. I got back on November 26th. The trip had gone well. And then it was time for relentless, relentless, relentless follow-up. The feedback that I got was positive, but time was not on my side. People said to me, Todd, look, we think that we can do something, but December 10th, that's impossible. December 4th, no money. December 5th, no money. December 6th, no money. December 7th, no money. December 8th, another trip to the mailbox. But this time there was something different. There were two envelopes, both from companies I had visited. I tore those envelopes open so fast, and there it was. Two checks, $5,000. In that moment, Vidion was born. 48 hours. 48 hours separated me from a very different outcome from where I am today. 48 hours separated me from a total failure of my what and why. Over the next 20 years, Vidion's done amazing things. We've, we've enabled hundreds of millions of 
people to have Blu-ray and DVD technology thanks to what we've done. We've done things with Intel, Google, and Sony to develop leading-edge smart TV products. We've done things with Google to create some of the first Chromecast apps that were number one in the Google Play Store for three straight weeks. And right now, we're working with Amazon Web Services doing cutting-edge things in video live streaming that's about to disrupt broadcast TV. But it didn't come easy. We took huge risk on technology and products. We had failures that undermined the very existence of the company. But all the while, we pivoted, constantly keeping in mind our what and why of enabling people to be the person they dream of being and positively impacting society. Risk, fail, pivot. What do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? What really gets you excited? What wakes you up in the morning really wanting to attack the day? Start with your what and why. And make it big. Make it really big. This is your moonshot. But realize that there are going to be challenges along the way. And remember, that failure is an option when you define yourself by your response to failure rather than the act of failing. Failure is an option when your response to failure is guided by your what and why. In conclusion, I'd like to borrow a few words from Dr. Seuss with a little bit of a twist. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three-quarter percent guaranteed. So be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Failure is waiting. So get on your way. Thank you. <laughs>